Okay, welcome back and let us resume. Okay, what I wanted to do for this next little section is kind of shift it around a little bit and instead of just talking about the modeling itself, talk about model integration and how you get everything together. And that we've talked a little about how we can do this in Revit. There's this whole notion of linking models and we can take an architectural model, link it into the structural model and sort of see it in the background. We could also take our structural model and link it back into the architectural file so that the architect can see what the structural engineer is doing. And that sort of works okay as we're working on models. It's a little limiting in that you can see a lot of things in the background. You can almost you can touch them and interrogate them a little bit. But it's really hard to get a very good sense about how they all work together. So I want to look at two other ways we sort of get our models that are created by several different disciplines together and kind of explore how you get your models there. So we can start uh, sharing them that way and kind of collaborating with each other. So one way of doing this is using something called the A360 website. And a lot of you play around with that a little bit in terms of if you've posted a model out there and shared a link, it's easy to do. You, uh, but we'll show you how it works. It's like uh, you've already done that. But let's just gonna show for anyone who hasn't done that yet how that works. So here's the, mod the idea. Go over to my Revit model. Actually, that's an old Windows version. What's going on there? That's a picture. Where'd it go? Here we are. So I've got my fantastic model here. It's still under development, but I'd like to go ahead and share it with you so you can explore it and work with it. And what we can do is go through and save it and then just upload it to the site. So. There's a couple ways to do that. The commonest way, the way most people will do it, is to actually just save this Revit model out there onto their hard disk somewhere. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to save this out to my desktop. I'm just going to go through and put that. I'll put it on my Mac desktop right now, but it could be wherever you want it to be. Okay, and this is my... Session 10 sample model. It is now hanging around out there on my desktop, and when I want to go through and share this on A360, all I have to do is go over to the A360 website. So let me go back out there. If you haven't been there in the past, I think most of you have been there. If you haven't been there in the past, what you do is you go to stanfordrevit.a360, autodesk360.com and you sign up or you log in with your Autodesk ID, you should see a overall screen that looks something like this. If you aren't seeing this when you're trying to log in, there are actually two different sites available to you. There's this notion of you have a personal site and you also have the team site. And if you're over looking at your personal site, okay, all you have to do is click on your icon or click on your little uh, image, switch over to Team Stanford Revit, and you'll pop over there. So on this site, you actually see all sorts of different things in here. We see kind of different folders that are set up for uh, our different classes. You also see a little writing history of who's uploaded things. So you want to just keep track of what people are up to. You can kind of take a look at that and just sort of see uh, what's happening latest. If you come on down and I'll say, let me find spring, there it is, 120B, 220B. Just go ahead and find your folder. It's always best to put it in your own folder. And if you say upload a file, you can go ahead and just find it wherever you happen to have stored it. And we're uploading away, and that's all there is to it. Now, as you go through and put it there, what it's going through is doing a little analysis of the file. It's trying to figure out what can be viewed, what can't be viewed. It's just trying to kind of make some sense out of it. So it's going to do some analysis here for just a minute. But when it is unpacked that, it's going to go to have a, just a web viewable version of the file that you can share with folks so that they don't need to have Revit installed on their machine. And that's a good thing in that if you ever want to share things with, oh, your friends, your partners, your, uh, your mother, anyone who wants to sort of see what you're up to while you're here, 
you can go through and give them the link to this website, and then they can kind of check out what your models are too without having to install all of Revit, which is a bonus, as many of you know. Okay, so let's let that finish kind of installing for just a second. As it's finishing installing, what I'm actually going to do is on my iPad, I should also bring up A360. If you have an iPad or an iPhone, you can do this. Just download from the um, iOS App Store the A360 application, and you can go and take a look at the model there. I'm going to open it here first. Let's see what's going on. Here it is in the web interface. Okay, so that's not too awfully bad looking in terms of how it's all hanging together. Not too bad. I can go, uh, if I use the little walking tool, I can click on an area and walk up to it. I can double click on something to walk through it. But as I'm inside the building, I can do some looking around. I can do some orbiting. Kind of look up, see what this structure is looking like. See those trusses up at the top. But it's a really interesting way to experience your building. So I highly encourage you to use this. Let's go ahead and pop it on over there and start by taking a look. Not too awfully bad. OK. So in this view, you can kind of navigate around. You can also go through and do markups if you want to. If there's something that you, someone wants to leave a comment for you, there's this markup tool. You can sort of draw some sort of comment. We can put some text in there. Hmm. Can we do something to this corner? I'm going to save that away. And now we have a markup, and we have some comments on this. So people can leave you comments. If you go back and look at the comment, you can sort of see what someone had to say about your file. You can orbit around and go somewhere else. Or again, just return to those comments at any time and reply. So it's kind of this whole idea that it's a reviewing and sharing system. So anyone can go through and just kind of stash things away and kind of make them available. So a360 is a really simple system to work with. Just going to pop it on out there and uploading them this way, as soon as you upload them again, you know, will be available. There's only one view in there right now, although we can control that too. Okay, so this is sort of the uh, interface that's based on the web. If you can, try just uploading one of your files to A360 and sort of see what things look like. Does anyone else have a file up there I can work with? Yeah, Carl, you got yours up there? Let's take a look. Yeah, it doesn't think it's there just yet. Is it just not in that folder? Uh, maybe. Okay. Oh, no worries. That happens an awful lot. A lot of people just have that first, just kind of lying loose on the desktop. You can use ours. We're sticking with these for right now. So go ahead and see if you can throw it up in there. As you're doing that, let me do this. I'm going to go through and open it in the iPad. Um, if you have an iPad or you have an iPhone, I encourage you to just download the A360 application. Let me do this. I'm going to basically bring it up so that you can see it on the Mac screen. So here's Air Server. Let me come back over here. Show my little QR code. And as you're downloading or installing something to bring it up there, I'm going to go through and uh, where to go? Get this set up so you can see it on this side. OK, connect. Hang on. This is how I get my iPad to talk to this. Uh, looks like I'm not on the Stanford network just yet. Fix that. Let's see what's going on. I 
Okay, there's Stanford. Pop that back in. Okay, I'm on the network. Now let me try this again. Come back over here. Here I am. Back over here. Scan this code. Get my finger out of the camera. Okay, let's try this. Airplay. Okay, so what's going on now? This is just my iPad screen to see so to get a sense of what's going on over here. Let's come over and we'll go to A360 here. Where did I go to? Autodesk. Here it is. Here's the A360 application. The A360 application is really nice, especially in the iPad interface, in that it does the same things, but I think it's actually even a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to go on down to, oh, let's find that Stanford. Uh, there we are, building systems integration. Carl, are you up there now? Uh, Not just yet. Carl? <laughs> what else we got going on here? Amanda's up there. Bochen's up there. I can see some things that have been uploaded recently. Lucas looks like he has put some stuff up there. Norbert's up there. I think Norbert's up there. OK, we got some Norbert action. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Norbert didn't Norbert. volunteer, but Norbert, <laughs> <laughs> he just did. Those are the assignments, though. Oh. <laughs> ah, OK, no worries. Basically, in this interface, it's actually kind of really cool in that you can go through and just like uh, I'm basically pivoting around with my finger. I can pinch to zoom in or zoom out. Or what's really sort of nice is, there's this little wheel down here in the corner. It's this thing that is right over here. And if you are used to video games, you may use this. You sort of push forward. Is it very slowly? You could be about so far out. Let's try again. There we go. I'm just walking slowly. I can pan up, I'm going to go crashing into the building. That's the rendering of the materials. Now we're inside the building. This is better than we can do. So here we are, just mop, you know, walk on through. Not too up for that. So in the same sense, I can go through, let's go to another model here. Oh, who else was out there? Uh, Joe, where do you go? Woo -woo. Why are you connected? What's that? Why are you connected? Just, you know, just through the Stanford network and the A360 application. What do you mean, like, through the screen? Oh, that's just uh, something called Air Server. Okay. okay. So here we have a little bit of art museum action. Let's take a look at this. Looks like I have the architectural version. Let's check this out. So again, here is the idea behind that architectural file. We can go walking on in, crashing through, get a sense of what it's like to walk around in there. What I'm going to try to do is get to you guys this nice central atrium. You kind of try to pan on over. There we go. Here's his atrium. So if I want to look up, you kind of pan down. Go to the bottom of the atrium. If I want to look up, I check out the atrium. Again, I can snap pictures. I can do markups, whatever it is I want to do. So that looks kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and save that. So A360 is a good tool for doing that. It works on your iPhone, too. So whatever it is, just go ahead and think about uh, kind of working with the models. Now, out here, we also have a structural model. Let's take a look at that. So 
So here's kind of a first cut of what's going on with the structural. It looks like a nice radial system. Some cantilevers, but we can start to understand. And the same link to this model is what you can then put out on the design journal and we can open this up the web interface. Or if you open it up from an iPad, it'll open up in this interface. Okay, so A360 is really kind of a useful tool. I highly encourage you to start uploading your files out there because that way we can all check them out and just sort of see what's going on. Now, the other tool that I want to make you aware of is BIM 360. And let's talk about what BIM 360 is good for. BIM 360 is good for integrating together models from several different disciplines as opposed to working on them as separate models. So how BIM 360 works is what you do is um, over here, I have this model. I want to send it over to the BIM 360 system. I have given you all kind of accounts and projects out there in the BIM 360 system. If this is the model we want to save, what I'm going to do is go to the Add-ins tab, and there'll be a choice here called gluing the model. So gluing is going to send it up so I don't have to upload it externally. It's going to upload it just directly right here within Revit. Now, Glue may or may not work on your machine. If it's not working on your machine, it's typically that you just need to update some piece of the software on your machine so that it understands the web server. But if you try to glue your model, what'll happen is it'll ask us to log into the system. If you haven't already logged in, it'll want you to log in as whatever your autodesk ID is. Okay. It'll ask me to select my host. For us, the host is Stanford BSI Glue, Building Systems Integration. It'll next take me to a list of the different projects. And within here, there should be a whole bunch of different projects. So there's a bunch out here. I'm going to show even more of them because I have access to all of them. In your list, you should only have a few projects, That's the demo project and the one that we set up for you. So if you go zipping on down there. For example, oh, what am I going to do? I have them organized sort of, sort of in a spring sort of organization now. So let me go ahead and in my spring, people, who am I going to pick up? I'm going to pick up Peter for right now. I'll choose his project. I'll say next. Okay. What sort of file do I want to put out there? Or which views do I want to put out there? I can put a bunch of different views. The only one I really need to put out there is the, three, uh, the 3D. Anything that's showing in the 3D view will display. So I'm going to get everything that you're seeing right there. If I also want to get 3D, so I get the architectural, I can get that there. I'll say next. And here's what it's going to do. And it's going to try to post both those things to your project. I can go through and choose, if you have Navisworks installed on your machine, it'll give you the choice of VWF or MWC, because it understands the Navisworks format. If you don't have Navisworks, you'll only see DWF. For what we're doing, there's not really much of a difference. I think NWC carries a little more information. But just to avoid kind of cluttering up Peter's folder, I'm just going to go through and say, put blend stuff out there so it can be easily el eliminated at some point. And I'm going to upload it to the BIM 360 site. What BIM 360 excels at is that you can upload all the different models from all the different disciplines and it'll integrate them all together. So if you have an architectural model and a structural model, it'll show them and you can walk through the two models you know, overlay to each other. So it's hard at work doing that. You, if you want to follow along, just see if you can kind of connect to it. If it's not working, the most common thing is you need to just update your software. And it's using that RS application manager. It's like, you'd think one of those would have a staple in it, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Okay, it's working away, it's doing its thing. Okay, looks like it's uploading. Uploading the structural view. Great. It's gluing them. Now, if it's glued the files out there and they're in that system, you can get them to a number of different ways. There's this thing called the BIM 360 glue application. 
which you probably have installed. If not yet, we can get that installed on your machine. But when we open the BIM 360 Glue application, it's going to give you something that looks very much like the A360 application. It just needs... What is it? It has a few more features. So if I come back over here and I say spring, and I say, let's see if I can find where Peter is. There it is. And come back over here. Looks like I have the structural, looks like I have the architectural. So I can go through and take those different models and display them. Again, sort of giving it an interface that is somewhat familiar. Okay, there's the structural version of it. If I want to go to the other layer, I can look at that. The beauty of this and where a BIM 360 excels is you can merge several different models together. Let me show you how that works. Let me go out to, oh, pull it in back out here. If I have an architectural and a structural model and I want to see them together, I can merge them. And what I can do is actually choose the different things that I want to see together, the architectural and the structural. Okay, arc and structural. Merge them together. And it'll again show up in a merged interface so I can sort of see the, everything working together. So the first view was just only the architectural, or only the structural. Now this is more the integrated view. It has the architecture and the structure together. Again, I can walk through. Kind of get in there and take a look. Or I can do this from the web application, or the uh, iPhone application. Kind of pan around here and take a look. Now, the difference is between all these different interfaces are as follows. The BIM 360 interface actually has the most features of the different interfaces. In addition to walking through marking up, it actually has clash detection. So if you're thinking about a file that has many different elements and you want to make sure there aren't any spatial conflicts, you, know, you can go through and do clash detection. It'll find those things and highlight those very much like it does in Navisworks. Okay, so it's good in that front. Um, you can view the BIM360 model through a Chrome browser or through a web link. There's actually like that um, extension to do that. Or you can do it by installing this application. It's a pretty lightweight application, but it still involves a little bit of installation. Whereas A360 is available pretty much to anyone who has a web browser. So it's not quite as capable, okay, but it is sort of very what would I say? Easy to kind of get a hold of. Let me go ahead and try this again. Where did my window go? I'm mirroring over here. Gotta find where the window went. There it is. There's my Mac interface. BIM 360 has a very similar interface too. Let me come back over here. I'll say if I go to the interface over here on the iPad, I'll pull up that same model. Let's see what's going on. a little bit too long to upload it or uh, connect into the system. What you doing? There we go. Okay. If I go to Stanford BSI Glue and I go zipping on down there and find that 
place where I crashed into Peter's. Uh... Yeah, I'm not sure what that model was, but it's definitely not mine. That's like your example from class. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I just yeah, I just oh. threw it in there. Oh, you just threw it in my folder. Yeah, exactly. I understand. I just. <laughs> I didn't create a folder for myself, so I just like threw it in there. Yeah, what is that thing? Uh, you were a convenient harbor to. Uh... Happy to be so. Okay, so it's bringing it on down now. It's loading it down to my iPad. Same model here. Let's see what's going on. Finish up, finish up, finish up. A little network slowness. Oh, let me do this. I'm going to switch over to one of the locally mo bo the models that I have locally kind of stored here, too. Um, here's that hospital project that I like to bring up every once in a while. Let's see if I can pop in there. Take that back. It's going in there. Should have stayed back where I was. <coughs> See if it will load this one. Okay, so let's take a look at this model. It's painting its way in there. Okay, now this model, I won't comment on the quality of it. You can see it's a little rough around the edges. But if you want to, you can go through and just navigate on in there the same way we were. It's got that same sort of wheel. I don't know why you want to go inside, though. I know, that, that, that's a building is just so rough. Good. It is really. You couldn't imagine why anyone would want to like, even see a building like that. A but lobby. Yes, You're not paying attention. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whose building is that? It's mine. <laughs> so let's go zip it on si inside his building. Check that out. OK, now the nice thing is about this interface, too, is that it has this really groovy feature. Oh, is it in there? I think it's right there. If I hold down this little button, which uses the gyroscope on, or, you know, on your uh, iPad or your iPhone, you can hold that down and oh. you can sort of play that game and just kind of look around. Let's see what's happening at the top. So again, these are all just good tools to play around, sort of immerse yourself in the environment so you can sort of uh, just get a sense of what the buildings are like. But especially now, as we go through and start adding more and more layers to your buildings, these tools get to be really useful for kind of pulling it all together. Yeah? Do you know like that gyroscope tool? Yes. So, like if you were on site, you could use that and actually look at like what you're trying to build. Thank you for you over here. If you got yourself <laughs> oriented just right, you're right on to something that I think that a lot of people are working on now is more of an augmented reality sort of thing where you'd really like to sort of almost overlay the new plan on top of what the camera's seeing. So it doesn't quite do that yet, but it's inches away from doing that. So you could definitely imagine something like that's going to become commercially available, you know, I guess, within this next year easily because it's just, it's so close. You just want to be there. And then you can think about you know, filtering the information so different sorts of folks who are working on site see the information that's relative to them. You know, I'm an inspector, I want to see one set of information. I'm installing electrical or plumbing, I want to see a different layer of information. So, yeah, that's the whole notion of augmented reality and kind of mixing reality and the model environments. Very good right now, good research topic. Be beautiful.
Let us pause for today then. We will go through and just adjourn for today. But between now and then, next time, go through and spend some time just, you know, mapping out the structure, trying to get some of the basic structural elements in there. Uh, I'm not just getting that first step so that next time we get together, we can take a look at how we start to analyze and choose the sizes for those things. But also, if you can, if you have some uh, different models, see if I can pull them together into A360 or into Glue so that we can share them. Um, basically, you all have projects that we have access to and all the TAs have, ha have access to, so it's a great way for us to kind of really quickly be able to pop up your model and kind of like just take a look at it all without having to kind of do it within Revit. Okay, let us adjourn then. <laughs>